Film Criticism, Wikipedia Audio Film criticism is the analysis and evaluation of films and the film medium. The concept is often used interchangeably with that of the film reviews. A film review implies a recommendation aimed at consumers, however not all film criticism takes the form of reviews. In general, film criticism can be divided into two categories, journalistic criticism which appears regularly in newspapers, magazines and other popular mass media outlets, and academic criticism by film scholars who are informed by film theory and are published in academic journals. Academic film criticism rarely takes the form of a review, instead it is more likely to analyze the film and its place within the history of its genre, or the whole of film history. Film was introduced in the late 19th century but a robust criticism of the craft as an art form didn't emerge until the early 1900s. The first paper to serve as a critique of film came out of the Optical Lantern and Cinematograph Journal, followed by the Bioscope followed in 1908. It wasn't until the 1920s that critics started analyzing film for its merit and value as more than just entertainment, giving viewers a place where they could better understand the stories. In the 1930s, the film industry developed concepts of stardom and celebrity in relation to actors, which led to a rise in obsession with critics as well, to the point that they were often seen on red carpet and at major events with the actors. History it was in the 1940s that new forms of criticism emerged. Essays analyzing films with a distinctive charm and style to persuade the reader of the critic's argument. It was the emergence of these styles that brought film criticism to the mainstream, gaining the attention of many popular magazines, this made film reviews and critiques an eventual staple among most print media. As the decades passed, the fame for critics grew and gave rise to household names among the craft like James A.G., Andrew Saris, Pauline Kael, and in modern times Roger Ebert and Peter Traverse. Film critics working for newspapers, magazines, broadcast media, and online publications, mainly review new releases, although also review older films. An important task for these reviews to inform readers on whether or not they would want to see the film. A film review will typically explain the premise of the film before discussing its merits. The verdict is often summarized with a star rating. Some well-known journalistic critics have included, James A.G., The Nation, Vincent Canby, Roger Ebert, Mark Kermode, James Berardinelli, Philip French, Pauline Kael, Manny Farber, Peter Bradshaw, Michael Phillips, Andrew Saris, Joel Siegel, Jonathan Rosenbaum, and Christy Lemire. Roger Ebert and Gene Siskel popularized the concept of reviewing films in a television format in the show Siskel and Ebert at the movies which became syndicated in the 1980s. Both critics had established their careers in print media, and continued to write written reviews for their respective newspapers alongside their television show. Some websites, such as Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, seek to improve the usefulness of film reviews by compiling them and assigning a score to each in order to gauge the general reception a film receives. The Online Film Critics Society an international professional association of internet-based cinema reviewers, consists of writers from all over the world, while New York Film Critics Online members handle reviews in the New York Tri-State area. A number of websites allow internet users to submit movie reviews and scores to allow a broad consensus review of a movie. Rotten Tomatoes does this by generating separate consensus for critic reviews and user reviews. 
Some websites specialize in narrow aspects of film reviewing. For instance, there are sites that focus on specific content advisories for parents to judge a film's suitability for children. Others focus on a religious perspective. Still others highlight more esoteric subjects such as the depiction of science in fiction films. One such example is insultingly stupid movie physics by Intuitor. One website, Everyone's a Critic, allows anyone to publish film reviews and comment on them. Blogging has also introduced opportunities for a new wave of amateur film critics to have their opinions heard. These review blogs may focus on one genre, director, or actor, or encompass a much wider variety of films. Friends, friends of friends, or strangers are able to visit these blog sites, and can often leave their own comments about the movie and slash or the author's review. Although much less frequented than their professional counterparts, these sites can gather a following of like-minded people who look to specific bloggers for reviews as they have found that the critic consistently exhibits an outlook very similar to their own. Community-driven review sites have allowed the common moviegoer to express their opinion on films. Many of these sites allow users to rate films on a 0 to 10 scale while some rely on the star rating system of 05 or 044 stars. The votes are then culled into an overall rating and ranking for any particular film. Some of these community-driven review sites include Reviewer, Movie Attractions, Flickster, Film Crave, Flickchart, and Rotten Tomatoes. Some online niche websites provide comprehensive coverage of the independent sector, usually adopting a style closer to print journalism. They tend to prohibit adverts and offer uncompromising opinions free of any commercial interest. Their film critics normally have an academic film background. Journalistic Criticism More often known as film theory or film studies, academic critique explores cinema beyond journalistic film reviews. These film critics try to examine why film works, how it works aesthetically or politically, what it means, and what effects it has on people. Rather than write for mass market publications their articles are usually published in scholarly journals and texts which tend to be affiliated with university presses, or sometimes in upmarket magazines. Most academic criticism of film often follows a similar format. They usually include summaries of the plot of the film to either refresh the plot to the reader, or reinforce an idea of repetition in the film's genre. After this, there tends to be discussions about the cultural context, major themes and repetitions, and details about the legacy of the film. Some notable academic film critics include Andre Bazin, Jean-Luc Goddard, and François Truffaut, Kristen Thompson, David Bordwell, and Sergei Eisenstein. In the 2000s, the effect that reviews have on a film's box office performance and DVD rentals slash sales have become a matter for debate. Some analysts argue that modern movie marketing, using pop culture convention appearances and social media along with traditional means of advertising, has led, in part, to a decline in the readership of many reviewers for newspapers and other print publications. There are fewer critics on television and radio in the last 30 years. However, in recent years, there has been a growing concern in the film industry of the influence of online film criticism becoming disconcertingly potent, especially with the review aggregate website, Rotten Tomatoes, which was blamed for several films in 2017 underperforming because of the low score derived from film critics that the website posted for most of them. 
This has led to studies such as one commissioned by 20th Century Fox claiming that younger viewers give the website more credibility than the major studio marketing, which undercuts its effectiveness. Today, fan-run film analysis websites like Box Office Profits and Box Office Guru routinely factor more into the opinions of the general public on films produced. The undulating curve of shifting expectations refers to both the title of a recurring entertainment industry feature in New York Magazine by cultural critic Adam Sternberg and also to a concept of media analysis CO developed by writer Emily Nussbaum. Online Film Reviews Academic Film Criticism Docos refers to the dynamic tension between pre-release promotional efforts and subsequent audience reactions to entertainment media. Issues and Controversies Influence The Undulating Curve of Shifting Expectations Female Representation what the OCOS does is provide us a way of analyzing the trajectory of entertainment products as they metamorphize their way through his theorized seven-stage growth chart, pre-buzz, buzz, rave reviews, saturation point, overhyped, backlash, and finally, backlash to the backlash. There have been many complaints against the film criticism industry for its underrepresentation of women. A study of the top critics on Rotten Tomatoes shows that 91% of writers for movie-slash-entertainment magazines and websites are men, as are 90% of those for trade publications, 80% of critics for general interest magazines like Time and 70% of reviewers for radio formats such as NPR. Clem Basto, culture writer at The Guardian Australia, discussed the possible effects of this on the critical response to the 2015 film The Intern, which received mixed to positive reviews from critics. The critical response to The Intern was fascinating. There's a subset of male critics that clearly see Nancy Myers as code for chick flick and react with according bile. What's very interesting, though, is that I think female critics, working in an industry that is coded as very male, if not macho, often feel the need to go hard on certain films for women, presumably because they worry that they'll be dismissed, critically speaking if they praise a film like The Intern as though they're only reviewing it favorably because they're women.